This is Emerson Sparks from MuggleNet.com here at the Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince premiere in beautiful New York City, the Zigfield Theater. Many of these fans here have been lined up since a long time, a long time, and they're all super excited to see the stars who show up and see the movie. We'll be bringing you the latest from the red carpet, interviewing the cast and crew. Sparks. Hey, nice to see you, man. Hi. Uh, what we would love to know, we would love to know more about the DVD. What can, what can we ex uh, expect in terms of deleted scenes for the DVD? Uh, we've got a couple of things which, we've, you know the Slughorn photographs in the movie? Mm -hmm. We did a lot of improvisations with Jim, Jim Broadbent. So we put a whole selection of uh, Jim Broadbent moments together that are really playful and really funny because Jim's a really good comic actor. Uh, and we're still kind of reviewing some of the other scenes. We didn't cut a lot out, to be honest. It was really, you know, there are a few little bits and pieces in there that are really charming and stuff. Uh, there's one scene with Hermione and Harry when they're talking about the Marauder's Map. Harry's convinced he's seen Malfoy on there and uh, he's convinced Malfoy's up to something. We, we took that scene out, that'll be on the DVD extras. And there's also a scene in the Great Courtyard when Harry's kind of figuring out what Malfoy's up to, talking about uh, there's possibly he's using the vanishing cabinet. We took that out, so there's a couple we took out. Yeah. Another question. Um, obviously, you know, you have to make lots of tough decisions as a filmmaker about what to cut and what to leave. If there was one scene that you could stick in this movie that wasn't there, what are you, what are you most regretful about having to cut? Do you know, I ask myself that every time we make one of these movies, and um, I'm kind of feel good about where we've got with it. I do. I, I, I look, I look back at the source material often, and you know, and Joe Rowling uh, saw it. We showed it to Joe, and it's her favourite. She said, "Look, it's my favourite so far." So that kind of. You know, we're all nervous to hear what she thinks because we're so in awe of what she's given us, and so that I kind of figured that that feels right. So we're good. So Deathly Hallows filming is now underway. Yeah. Now, what scene are in particular are you most looking forward to filming? Do you know what I'm really looking forward to is the Hag the Seven Harrys Chase, which is a really cool action sequence. That's going to be really fun, and also the end uh, confrontation with Voldemort. That we've been waiting seven books, and seven, eight, seven movies to get to that point. Uh, that's going to be really cool, and, and we've already shot a lot of cool stuff, really moving stuff. Uh, one of my favourite things is the Ron and uh, the Ron and Hermione kiss that we've already filmed. It's really, it was really cool to shoot. Hi, Bonnie Emerson Sparks from MuggleNet.com. So I know you're, you've got to be sick of hearing questions like this by now, but one of our readers wanted to know, was it awkward kissing Dan when you're taller than him? Oh, really? I'm, to be honest, without these heels, I'm pretty much the same height. So, um, but it was weird. I guess we've known each other for so long, so it almost feels like we're still the age when we started. But, yeah. Are there any scenes from the next movie, Deathly Hallows, that you're looking forward to filming in particular, as your character has a much more important role? Yeah, there's a lot of things. I'm really excited, to be honest. The best thing I'm really excited for is the epilogue, the, you know, 14 years later when we're sort of married with children. It seems so surreal, but yeah. yeah. Okay. If you could keep any item from the set as a souvenir, what, what, would, you, what would you want to keep? Um, I think, I know it sounds really probably boring to a lot of people, but I spent so much time in the Gryffindor jumpers or, and the cloaks, so I'd probably take that, although it's quite simple, it just, it, you know, it has such a kind of, I don't know, memory for me. Great, thank you very much, Bonnie. Thank you. Hey Dan, Hello. Emerson Sparks from MuggleNet. Nice man, how are you? I'm doing great. Excellent. Listen, Deathly Hallows filming is underway now, so what scene are you uh, most looking forward to film? I'm still, the one I'm both, um, terrified about filming and very excited is the when Harry makes that long walk, that pilgrimage into the forest um, to, to meet Voldemort right at the end of the film. I'm, I'm really looking forward to doing that just to see if I can actually uh, do it justice. Okay, what scene from uh, Half-Blood Prince then did you find the most challenging? Which, which challenged you the most? Dumbledore's death scene was the, by far the, the hardest scene in the film. I mean, there are lots of hard scenes. I mean, all the stuff with Dumbledore is, is, very, is, is very involved and complex in the film. But um, yeah, no, it's, it's, it, it, that, but Dumbledore's death was, was the trickiest of the lot. Okay, when this Harry Potter thing is all said and done and you have grandkids and you're trying to explain to them what it was like, how would you describe it if you had to describe it in like a sentence? Oh, good question. Um, I actually don't know. I would say, I would, you know what? I have a video at home of me at the age of 13 when I first arrived in Japan 
and, um, and there were 5,000 people waiting for me at the airport streaming. And I think I'd just show them the video. I think that'd be easier than, you know, a picture says, uh, says a thousand words and all that, you know. If you, if you could keep any item from the set as a souvenir, what would you keep? A wanted poster, one of the Harry Potter wanted posters. I, one of them, I think that'd be great, that'd just be cool. And I'm, I'm hopefully I'll never have a real one made of me, so, you know, I'd like, like a fake one to put up in the house somewhere. Thanks a lot, Dan. You Listen, we want to know about the DVD. Okay. What can we expect? Like deleted scenes? Yeah, uh, there are a few deleted scenes. Not that much because um, we we really stuck to the script and didn't cut out that much. On the Blu-ray, I've just seen some stuff which is going to be really cool, which is a lot of the cast go around the set and inter in interview various heads of departments. So, for example, Dan spent some time in editing and uh, with Mark Day, and uh, it's hosted by Alfie Enoch and uh, and uh, Neville Thomas. So, and Dean, Th sorry, Dean Thomas and Neville. So they host the thing, and that's pretty cool. And then we got a little sequence which David cut together. So you know the moving pictures? Well, there's a whole load of Slughorn pictures, of Slughorn you know, showing off with various people. And so we, he, we, he did around 20 or 20, 25 photographs more that were live, in motion, you know, in motion. And Jim's a great, Jim Broadbent, who plays Slughorn, is a fantastic comedian. So we strung uh, a few of those together in a montage. So I think there'll be some pretty cool stuff. Okay. Can you comment at all on the PG rating? That uh, apparently, with you know what? I, have you seen the film? Uh, yeah, you have. Okay. okay, so it, it puzzles me because I mean, it's not like a conscious decision to be darker or less dark, and you can never count. You, know, you can never sort of predict what the MPAA will do. Um, there are things in this that feel to me like they should be PG-13, but you know what? It's. Um, I think the film is a really good film, and I'm really proud of it. And uh, PG or PG-13, that's fine. It's never going to be an R. Okay, so years from now, when you have little kids and little grandkids running around, you have to describe to them what this was like. How would you, if you had to, you know, describe it in a sentence oh, or two? How would really, you do it? You know, that's a really good question. I haven't thought. I've got a, I've got a, um, a 14 month old son who's here with me today, and um, I just think about well, what am I going to say to him? You know what? It's been the most amazing adventure and a real privilege to be a part of something so wonderful. All right. Okay. okay. If you could keep any item from the set as a souvenir, what would you, what, what would you want? Ooh, wow. You know, I mean, I would love to have, I mean, he's probably answered this, but something that you, I, that doesn't really exist, but an invisibility coat would be pretty cool. But, um, a, a, God, I don't know. There's so many cool, you know, I, I, cool props. I've actually been keeping a few of them all the way along. You know, I, each film, I keep a few props for myself. From, for example, I've got um, the Quidditch box full of, you know, a quaffle and a snitch and all, you know, a bludger and a, you know, a bat. Um, uh, I don't know. Uh, I love all, you know, there are so many things where the, de you know, the detail of the work is incredible. I love, I mean, I'm, I'm going to get a copy of, um, of uh, the Book of Magic, you know, the, 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 uh, um, God, I don't know. It's it's so hard. No, I haven't thought about that, but I will think about it next time you ask me. I just want to say, on behalf of the fans, as always, thank you, uh, thank you so much for being uh, protecting our series and uh, doing it justice and treating it with the respect that it deserves. Thank you. You know, it's uh, it's a real privilege to be a part of it. And, you know, fans like you, and, you know, you're a fantastic organization. Really appreciate the support that you give the films and and uh, you know Joe Rowling's books. They're fantastic, and and you know it and you celebrate it. And thank you for that. All right, you rocked it. Okay, thank you so much. Care. Thank you. Have and I'm going to think of an answer to that question. I feel right. like it's an idiot, but I don't know. <laughs> I read the first two when I was very young, and then it kind of it became famous. You saw more people having it, and then you kind of. Uh, I, then I read, of course, the sixth one to, to study Cormac, um, but that's it. So I hadn't hadn't read the others. Just watched the movies a few times. So yeah. If you could swipe one thing from the set and keep it as a souvenir, what would you what would you pick? I think the wand, maybe. The wand was quite cool. Just to just have that around. I mean, the broom would have been cool, but it's a bit much. I <laughs> think. Um, yeah, I'd probably say the ones. They're quite. They were quite cool. We all got given one for um, the ending scene. I'm not going to spoil anything. Uh, but yeah, so that would have been quite cool. Just to hold it to one of those. Great. Yeah. What was your favorite scene to film? Favorite scene to film. Possibly the scene in Slughorn's office uh, where we have the Slug Club and. Uh, that was really fun just because we got to have these really awkward moments where I look at Hermione and I kind of, I'm constantly trying to get her attention and she's just not having any of it. So that was, that was fun for comedy wise. That and the stunts. Stunts was wicked, yeah. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.